Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rustic Wife. I'm Alana. So today I'm going to be making some banana bread and I have a lot of bananas that I've bought too many and they're going brown so that's what we're going to do today. And I also want to show you a trick to make your banana bread domed at the top. I used to always have a problem with the bread kind of caving in the middle and it would be raw in the middle so I'd have to eat around the outside and it was ugly and <laughs> and a pain in the butt. So anyway, I'm going to show you that trick today, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you I've got this 9 by 5 by 3 loaf pan, whatever loaf pan you've got, but I find for me this one is great. It's just a Corningware one. If you have a glass one, that's good too. They they don't heat up as quickly as the um, tin. They hold their heat, but they don't heat up super quick to burn the bottom. Um, you guys might all have luck with whatever pan you have, but for me, um, when I was using any of the aluminum pans or just any metal one, I would get the bottom kind of burnt, the top sunken in the middle, <laughs> and it, it was actually just a bit of a, a mess. So anyway, I like this. This was my mom's, and I like to use this one. So you can just grease and flour your, your pan, but I put some parchment in there. Um, I just take the parchment, wet it, crunch it up, and then it just kind of fits wherever you want it to fit. So it's not beautiful, but who cares? I've got my ingredients all measured out here, and the first one is the banana. You can see it's kind of a heaping cup. It's kind of made a mess there. But you're going to need a cup of mashed banana, and for me it was four small bananas this size. So whatever size bananas, bananas you use, you're just going to need a, a cup um, or a heaping cup in my case. I have two eggs, a third of a cup of sour cream. You can use yogurt as well if you like. I have a third of a cup of sunflower oil. You can use butter. You can use half oil, half butter, whatever you like. Um, I also have some granulated sugar. That's three quarters of a cup. I also have some three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of baking soda. I've got two cups of all-purpose flour. I've done this with spelt flour before and it's good. That's just two cups of spelt flour if you want to change that out, or one cup of spelt and one cup of all-purpose, whatever, but today it's just all-purpose and that's two cups. And I have some vanilla and that is some bourbon vanilla, so I thought that would be good. I made that back in March, I think. Um, and then I have some walnuts. Those are optional. If you like walnuts, you can put those in. That's about a half a cup of chopped walnuts. So we'll get this started. Oh, I also have my oven preheated to 425. Now heating the oven up to 425 is the trick that I found to get your um, banana bread domed. I do this with muffins as well. And that extra blast of heat just kind of gets the um, batter to rise, and then we turn the oven down after about five or six minutes. So I'm gonna show you that when the time comes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sift the flour with the soda and um, baking powder. You don't have to do this, but I just find that sometimes you get little lumps of soda in your finished product and it doesn't taste the nicest. So I'm just gonna sift, that's two cups of flour and the two cups was measured pre-sifted. So it was just the spoon and level method in my measuring cup. And now we're just sifting the two cups. I'm just gonna sift it into the bowl here. Actually, I'll just put everything else in there too. So that's um, one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. And the salt is a little bit too coarse for this. So I'll put that in later. Then we're going to add our salt. Just give that a little whisk together. And I'm going to set that aside. And then to another bowl with the liquid ingredients, I will add the two eggs. I like to crack my eggs into a separate bowl because I've had them before where had a blood spot in the egg and it just ruins the whole batter. Give those a bit of a whisk. 
And then I'm going to add the oil, the sugar, the sour cream, the mashed banana, and I just use this, my potato masher, to mash up the banana nice and fine. And then just, I don't know, maybe about a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of vanilla. That's optional. If you don't want vanilla, you don't have to put that in either. I'm just going to add the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and mix that together. And then we'll add our, our walnuts. I know some people insist on adding the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients, but I just do it this way. So I just kind of fold that in. I don't want to over mix the banana bread batter because it might make it tough and we don't want that. I'll just add the walnuts. Fold that into. Just want to make sure all the flour from the bottom of the bowl is mixed in. And if there's some lumps in there, that's fine too. So we're going to put this in the oven at the preheated 425 degrees and we're going to put that in there for about five or six minutes and then we're going to reduce the oven temperature down to 350 and that will bake for probably about 55 minutes because it takes a while. Um, also the other thing that gives it a bit of a rise too is um, well the baking soda and baking powder in there but the acid from the sour cream it actually activates with the um, soda, so it helps it kind of give it a lift as well. So I'm going to put this in the oven. And I'm going to set the timer for, I'll do six minutes. All right, my timer went off, so I'm going to set that timer again for about another 55 minutes and then I'm going to turn the temperature down to 350. So I'm going to wash these dishes and then I'm going to head out to the garden and pick a few things and then the banana bread should be done. Now if you notice that the top is getting a little brown, um, just reduce your heat to 325 for the last 11-12 minutes of the uh, bake time. So the timer just went off and I am going to pull it out of the oven. I'm pretty sure it's done. And there we go. Look at that, the top is domed. It's not sunken in and it's not burnt. Now that's a good loaf of banana bread when you can actually eat the whole thing. You can actually eat the ends, the sides, because they're not burnt, and the middle because it's not caved in. So there are my couple of tricks to having a loaf of banana bread that part of it doesn't need to go in the garbage. So I hope that helped. And um, we're going to cut into this once it cools a little bit, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so uh, it's been a few minutes still hot but I'm going to lift it out of the pan and peel away some of this parchment and let it cool on the rack. I don't like to leave it in the baking pan too long because I don't want this to sweat down here. Look, the bottom isn't burnt either. 
So there we go. And just let that cool on the rack a little bit longer before I cut a piece of it and put some butter on it. Okay, because I'm starving, I'm not going to let that cool too much. And James is going to come in and have some as well. A nice kind of a nice crust on the top which is what I like so that's what it looks like on the inside so I just polished off this piece or one of the pieces of banana bread it was very good um, not dense or sometimes you know banana bread is wet Ugh, I don't like that at all so that's why I only put one cup of mashed banana in there so anyway those are my tricks and thanks for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did please consider subscribing and I'm gonna see you again next time